Is your skin dry and scaly? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk to my friend Wally here. How you feeling, bud? Have I got the thing for you? <laughs> hey everyone, it's Jessica with Montana Family Pharmacies, and today Josh and I are gonna talk about winter skincare. We live in an area that's super dry, and a lot of us struggle with skin issues in the winter. Josh, what are some things that people can do to help like with their dry skin issues without necessarily using any special creams and things like that? Uh, yeah, a couple environmental things that we can do. Um, first and foremost is avoid long hot showers. That's about the worst thing you can do for your skin. <laughs> That's what I do all the time. <laughs> Um, what that does is it just kind of robs your skin of the natural oils, which are there to help protect and hydrate your skin. Okay. Um, so yeah, long hot showers or long hot baths, um, excessive scrubbing with soaps and those mm -hmm. sort of things can um, definitely rob your skin of the important oils that you need. Okay. Um, another thing that's really good to do is oftentimes um, the air is a lot drier um, in the winter and we got our heaters running in the house so it's a lot um, it's a lot drier environment. So run a humidifier in your house, um, run it in your bedroom at night, that sort of thing. Get some moisture back into the air. Um, that'll help keep the skin moist and that'll help prevent a lot of your dry skin issues. So just a couple other important things that are gonna help um, to help keep your skin hydrated. So make sure that you're using sunscreen. Um, even though it's winter time, um, oftentimes we can still do a lot of damage if we're not um, protected properly. So, okay. um, you know, if we're out there skiing, um, you know, snowshoeing, whatever it is, we're often getting a double reflection, so we're getting it off the snow as well, so we can, our skin oh, okay. can burn much easier. Yeah. Um, and then just stay hydrated, um, making sure that we're um, drinking plenty of water and staying well hydrated is actually gonna be very good for the skin as well. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So if somebody is doing those things, but they're still struggling with eczema or just super dry skin, what are some things you would suggest for them? So um, most important, as soon as you get out of the, uh, the tub or the shower, put a good lotion on. Um, just get a good layer of lotion um, kind of right away, just kind of rehydrate that skin. Um, and then there's a couple other um, things to consider um, as far as for, you know, if you have eczema, kind of more dry patchy areas, um, a few different creams to use. So when it comes to choosing the cream, um, it's important, especially if you have sensitive skin, to choose the right cream. We want to choose um, creams that are free of dyes and fragrances, things that can irritate your skin. Mm -hmm. Since it's already dry and irritated, um, certain creams can make that worse. So okay. um, I recommend Vanna Cream or CeraVe. Um, both of these are um, just great creams. Um, really kind of a long lasting kind of a deep moisturizing cream and again they're kind of dermatologist recommended because they are free of kind of the fragrances and the dyes that can can irritate our skin. Okay. Um, one thing with the cream is that a cream doesn't tend to last as long so you're going to have to reapply a little bit more frequently. Um, if your skin is really dry um, or like at nighttime, I like to use a product that's more of an ointment base. Um, it will last a little longer it's greasy, so that can sometimes be a bit of a pain, um, but it's gonna last longer and it's actually gonna help push the moisture in. Um, what I like is, actually I found that Aquaphor is the best one. Um, I carry this with me everywhere I go. Um, I use it on my lips for um, dry chapped lips. Um, my kids have real bad eczema, so we use this on them. Um, the nice thing about Aquaphor is it's more than just like a Vaseline, it, it's better because it has lanolin in it, um, some other things which actually help push the moisture back in. So that's going to um, promote healing. And then because it is a petroleum base kind of like Vaseline, it provides a nice protective barrier as well. So it protects and it promotes healing. So a product like this is really good. Um, I used to work construction and my knuckles would get cracked in the winters because the air is so dry. Um, and so I would use this at night and I would just rub it on real thick and heavy and then by the morning um, oftentimes, you know, the cracks were gone or healing. So um, so these this can be really good especially for the, the more severe cases. Okay, great. And sometimes with the people who have bad eczema, it can get really itchy and that sort of thing um, and can really just be a bother. So mm -hmm. um, definitely want to do the creams or the ointments just to kind of help keep it moisturized. Um, sometimes it actually requires using a steroid. Um, I just recommend just good old hydrocortisone cream. Okay. Um, hydrocortisone is just a real mild steroid, but it helps take down the inflammation. Mm -hmm. So it'll help kind of knock out the itch get the inflammation down, which is actually going to allow and promote the healing faster. So okay. um, hydrocortisone is good to use. Um, the thing that we will need to remember with steroids is we need to try to um, avoid prolonged use. If we use steroids for, um, usually I like to say seven days on and then seven days off. 
Um, it can um, prolonged use can cause uh, like a mild thinning of the skin. Um, so mm -hmm. we had, we don't need to go down that path, yeah. okay? Um, but it's definitely a great option, especially if the rash is really itchy, okay? okay. Um, a couple other things just to consider. So I know we talked about a humidifier. Um, I like the Cool Mist humidifiers. Okay. Um, just great for wintertime conditions as well, um, just because puts the moisture back in the air. So it actually helps with a lot of people will get um, dry nose or um, bloody noses in the um, winter as well. Mm -hmm. It kind of helps rehydrate the sinus bed, which actually helps prevent you from getting sick as well. Um, better able to catch viruses and bacteria in the air, um, as well as it'll help, uh, um, if you do get sick, it'll help loosen things up in your sinuses and your lungs, um, as well as kind of hydrate your skin. Um, cool mist, I really like just because they don't necessarily breed or harbor the bacteria in them. Mm, okay. uh, the warm humidifiers can sometimes have bacteria and be spitting that out into the air. So you're, it's more important that you clean those regularly. Right. Um, always use um, good distilled water or filtered water in these, um, in any humidifier. That's just going to make sure that it lasts longer and you're getting the best oh. results and you're not inhaling anything bad as well. Okay. Um, uh, and then one last thing that can really be beneficial vitamin D. Um, they just keep finding out more benefits of vitamin D. So it actually just helps promote kind of healthy muscles, healthy skin. It's good for your bones. Um, we don't get a lot of vitamin D in the winter, right. especially living in Montana. So a, a simple supplement of vitamin D um, can be beneficial to help just overall health as well as uh, with your skin as well. Okay. Awesome. Um, vitamin D3 is the over-the-counter one. Just a thousand I use a day should be sufficient. Um, and there's going to be multiple benefits from that. So, okay. If you want me to... So sometimes in the winter, my scalp gets pretty dry. So what would you recommend for that? Um, actually, very very common. Um, same thing. Just due to the the dry air, um, you know, your scalp will, will get dry. Um, so with that, um, using a good shampoo like the Head and Shoulders, the Clinical Strength, um, mm -hmm. one of the ones with like the selenium sulfide, those tend to be the stronger, more potent ones. And just incorporating that into your um, weekly bathing cycle, so even just once or twice a week. Um, usually I suggest doing it for like three or four days. You'll see that you will typically clear up within that time frame. Okay. And then just do it maybe once a week thereafter just to kind of help keep it hydrated and kind of keep everything cleaned up. So very, very common problem, especially in the winter time. Okay. okay, so thanks to Josh for talking to us today about taking care of your skin in the winter. You can visit with your local pharmacist about problems that you're facing with your skin and what they would recommend um, and what products they have in their store. You can find your local pharmacy at montanafamilypharmacies.com.